Good afternoon, everyone. Folks, sir, this is a recording notice. This lecture is being recorded. If you have any concerns, let me please. What we are going to start today is uh, second method, which was uh, rank statistics. We finished uh, histogram last time. Now we're doing the second method with the rank. Statistics. Now, where we use this method, if the amount of data is small, we use rank statistics. In this method, we find CDF cumulative distribution function instead of PDF. That's what we were doing in the last method. PDF probability density function. Some steps that we need to follow. So, what are the steps here in this method? The first step is take the sampling. random variable and list them in an order. The second step is estimate f of x which is the cdf f of x of i for each xi using now we have two functions that we can use the first one is uh, f of x is equals to i n plus 1 or you can use 
f of x i minus 0 0.3 over n plus 4 uh, 0 0.4 3 over n plus 0.4. This is what we call as mean rank method. And this one is called as median rank. Usually your question defines which uh, rank you need to use, but this one is the most commonly used median rank. Folks, I need to go to next slide, please. Now I'm going to take an example and I will elaborate you this method. The following are the time to failure. for nine flashlight bulbs what are the times here 72 113 127 82 97 117 103 126 and 139 The objective is make a plot, make a plot of f of t where T is time to failure. Now, what is the solution for this? So we can see that we have nine flashlight bulbs. So as I mentioned in the last lecture, this nine is less than 20. So we will use the rank statistics method here. So let's say this is my column for I. This is my column for T of I. And this is my F of T.
So my I will be from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now the T of I, we need to arrange them in the ascending order. So corresponding to first value, it will be 72, 82, 97, 103, 113. Corresponding to 6, it will be 117, 126. Corresponding to 8, it is uh, 127. And corresponding to 9 is 139. Now f of t, I'm using the mean rank method in which uh, I know the formula was i over 1 plus n. And the value of n is 9 here. So that gives me my f of t should be equal to i divided by 10. So the first value corresponding to this should be 1 over 10 which is 0.5 that should be i is equal to 1 here which is now 0.1 similarly corresponding to these it will be 2 over 10, which is 0.2 then we have 0 0.3 0 0.4 Point 0.5, point 0.6, point 0.7, point 0.8, and point 0.9. So the so f of t of i. Now just keep in mind this i here. It represents the rank of your data. The next, we just need to draw this data. So let me do it on this slide. This is my T of I here. And this is my F of uh, T of I. So it will be 72. Then I have 82. You can draw it in Microsoft or any computer tool and you will keep doing until you have the last point of uh, 139 so corresponding to 72 my value is 0.1 so for example this value comes over here 0 0.1 and corresponding to 82 my value is 0 0.2 so this will be for example it is up to this point that is my 0 0.2 this is how you will have the state graph. You need to keep in mind if you have values. Let's say you have uh, i values of uh, 1, 2, 3, up to so on, and your ti values, they are 
by that i mean to say it could be let's say 72 82 90 and on this one i have two values 103 corresponding to 4 and corresponding to 5 i again have 103 in that case for the graph you will the value with as high 50 i value so this value here should you will have let's say point 0.1 here a 50 and this is your 2 Point three, point four, and zero point five. So this is the value that you need to choose for your graph, not this value. Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. The next topic is about uh, goodness. Of fit test. The first method in this test is. Chi scare method. Or the test. This CHI is read as Chi. Now I'm going to write down some steps for this. The first step is range of the N observed data is divided into m intervals The second step is the number of observations in each Interval N I. This is what we call frequency when we're doing histogram is determined. And 
and of course for this i it should be greater than one greater than equal to one and it should be less than equals to your m intervals the third step is observed frequencies and one for example and two up to of m are then compared with the corresponding theoretical frequencies which are denoted as uh, E1 or E2 up to EM obtained um and assumed distribution folks i need to go to the next slide please the quantity submission of uh, n i minus of e of i and we take the scale of this difference and divide it e i i is from 1 to m approaches chi scale distribution with f is equals to m minus 1 minus k degree of freedom
have fixed your degree of freedom here. As the total points and tends to infinity. Now in this equation, this m is the number of intervals, number of uh, intervals the k is number of distribution parameters estimated from data as an example you know that uh, for normal distribution we have the parameters of uh, mu and sigma so in this case in the normal distribution my k is two because there are two distribution parameters in exponential distribution you know i have lambda as the parameter so in case that case my k value should be equals folks i need to go to the next slide please Step is our significance level which is noted as alpha. is selected value of the alpha ranges uh, between 1% to 10% Now, for example, if someone has a sig significance level of uh, 5%, as an example, what does it mean? It employs that for 5. out of uh, 100 out of a total 100 different samples
theoretical distribution cannot an acceptable model this is how you interpret 5% uh, of significance level if your quantity n minus 1 sorry n i minus e i and scale divided by e i where the i is from 1 to m that is less than equals to c c of uh, 1 minus alpha comma f assumed distribution can be accepted with a significance level of data now what is this c factor here this is the chi scale Vector which comes from the tables. Now let me take. Uh, so for example, I'm going to do it for if let's say my significance is alpha is uh, five percent. Let's say, and my f value. which is a degree of freedom that is 2 so my c of uh, 1 minus alpha will be it is uh, 1 minus alpha which is uh, 0 0.05 and f value is 2 so that turns out to be the c value at 0 0.95 and at the value of 2. Now I'm going to show you what are the tables I'm talking about. Books. These are the tables which I will provide you on D12, of course. So, as you can see here, you read 
stable first. This is my value of alpha on the top. It is 0 0.001, 0 0.005. And this is my value of degree of freedom over here. This is my values of f. All these are the values of f. In my example, I have my alpha as uh, 0.95. This is what alpha I'm concerned with. And the value of the f was 2. So this is my, so just came from here and we find out that our value of c is 5.99. This is how you your values using the table. So what I will go to here, I can write it down for this value is equals to 5.99. one. This is coming from the tables. Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. Now I'm going to take and I will elaborate you all these four steps in that example. There is a test uh, conducted and it provided us uh, 41 observations. I'm not going to write down that whole table. I will put table on D12 so that you can practice this example at home as well. I will just write down some values out of that table. So for test 1, 2 and up to 41. There were 41 observations and what the researcher is finding here, he is finding the Young's modulus. In terms of uh, per square inch. Now the first uh, value corresponding to the test number one, he got his 28,900. Similarly, he has the values corresponding to second, which is uh, 2,900, 2,000. And there are some values in between. And then the last values is 29,400. 0, 0. The mean value of all these 40 equation is uh, 29. 576 and the sigma value is uh, 1507. The objective is determine whether the observed is normal or log normal random variable at 
five percent significance level So what is our objective here? We have the data, which is 41 observation, and we do have the Young's models values, which, is, which are denoted as E. I should have written it here. So we determine whether the observed data is normal or log normal random variable at 5% significance level. Now, what is the solution for this? We will go with the step number one. Divide in M intervals. So for this one, I'm going to see five intervals. Folks, I need to go to next slide, please. Here, I will uh, make a table here. Now this first column is the value of our E. The second column is about uh, observed frequency. Which is denoted as NI. The third column is uh, theoretical frequency. Theoretical frequency. And the last uh, column is the quantity which I discuss, which is N I minus E I whole square divided by E I. Now, one thing you need to notice here, he's asking to check it for two distributions. So, this theoretical frequency and this quantity be divided further divided into two columns so i will take this as uh, the normal random variable or normal distribution and this one will be log normal if the question asks you to check for let's say even exponential so you will have the third exponential distribution Similarly, this table goes to normal distribution and the log normal. So that's what uh, we are going to find out the values here.
we said that we want to have five intervals. So we go with the data and this will starting from less than 28,000. The second interval could be 28,000 to 29,000. The third interval could be from 29,000 to 30,000. The next could be from 30,000 to 31,000. So how many intervals I have so far? One, two, three, four, and the last one can be the value could be more than thirty-one thousand. Now we need to find out the values corresponding to these ones now. So for the observed frequency, which is Ni, you go to your original table and see how many times. The values are less than 28,000. When I counted them, they are 5. So my observed frequency is 5. Then you will see how many values are lying between 28,000 and 29,000. Those were 8. Similarly, this number is 13. This number is 7. And this number is 8. When you add up all of these, this should be equal to your total number of observations, which are 41 in this case. Now, then we need to find out the theoretical frequency. Start with the normal distribution here. In the normal distribution, we just need to find out our CDF value at 28,000. So let me do it here. So the probability value where x is less than 28,000, that is equals to, we need to find out the value of CDF of x at 28,000. Which means I will find my phi of z at uh, 28,000 minus my mean value which is uh, 29 mean of the data 29576 this should be divided by which is 1507 so this turns out to be minus uh, 1.051 now you can use either the tables for normal distribution or you can Microsoft Excel and this value turns out to be 0 0.146. Now because we need to have this for 41 observations. So what I will do. My EI for this one will be 0 0.1469 multiplied by 41, and that turns out to be 6 6 6.021. This is the number which will come here for normal distribution.
it will be 6.02. I hope this is clear to one of you. For the second one, we have the interval here. So the same process applies, but we will take the interval. Folks, let me go to next slide and uh, find this out for you. Then I will come back on this table. We need to find out uh, for 28,000 where x is greater than 28,000 and less than 29,000. This is the same thing as I say that I need to find my CDF at 29,000. This thing you have done previously. Minus I take the CDF value of at 28,000. So by that I mean to say this will be my phi z value at uh, 20,000 minus the mean value which is 29576 divided by my sigma which is 1507 minus the same procedure for this. This is 28,000 minus uh, 29576 divided by 1507. Now, once you solve it, you will get a number which I don't have at the moment. Let's say you get it number A. You need to find it actually. So my EI for this should be equals to this number multiplied by 41 because that's my total number of observations. So this turns out to be 8.41. So that's the number that I need to write down for this range of problem. Folks, I will go back to that uh, table and fill this number there. So corresponding to this range, my value turns out to be 8.41. Now with the same procedure for this range, for this range, my value is 10.59. For the range between 30,000 and 31,000, the answer should be 8.966. And the last one stands out to be 7.013. Now, how do you confirm if you are going right or wrong? When you add up all these numbers, these should be equals to 41. So let me make some space here by deleting this. So once you add up these number, these should turns out to be four. Now let's come to the log normal. Now the same procedure applies for the log normal. I will do the first one here, which is less than. So I'm doing it for log normal now. For log normal. P 
is uh, x is less than 28,000 that is equals to f of uh, 28,000 So this one, in terms of the log normal, if you recall, the formula was phi of z over 1 over w ln of uh, y over y naught. And in this one, your w is, which I have calculated, is 0. 0, 0.051 and your y naught is 2958 so this one will be phi of z at uh, 1 over 0 0.051 okay let me write it down here One over zero point zero five one log. We want to find it out at the value of twenty eight thousand. So that will be twenty eight thousand divided by your y naught, which is two nine five three eight. Once you solve it, uh, you will get the value of uh, something which I don't have again. However, the final E of I should be this value should be multiplied by 41. I do have the final value which is 6.116. That's the number that we need to fill in. It will be 6.116. Now using the interval between 28,000 and 29,000 of normal distribution, the answer which I'm going to write down is uh, 8.774 with the same procedure. This one turns out to be 10.600. This one turns out to be 8.600. This one will be six nine one zero. Again, if you want to confirm your calculations, the sum of all these numbers should be equals to forty one. So once you add up these numbers, these ones should be equals to forty one. Total number of your observations. Now, once you have these two columns, this one is a little bit easier. We just need to calculate. This is my observed frequency and I. I subtract it from the theoretical frequencies, EI of these. Take a scale and divide it by the respective theoretical frequency. So this table is uh, developed and it is uh, 0. 173. This is 0 0.020. This is uh, 0 0.548. This value will be 0 0.431. This value will be 0 0.139. Now, similarly, for the log normal. The observed frequency remains the same, 
However, the theoretical frequency, the, the EI will change in the log normal. This answer will be 0 0.20. This will be 0 0.068. This is 0 0.543. And this will be 0 0.298. And this one will be 0 0.172. Now the next step is we need to add up these numbers. And if you uh, allow me, I can just delete uh, this one. Now the next step is we need to add up uh, these number. So I add up uh, these numbers and because if you recall we need to take the sum of this quantity. So this turns out to be 1.311. Again for the log normal the same procedure I add up these numbers here. What I get is 1.285. Now, in the last step, I need to compare it with the C. This is the significance level, which was at 5%, he was saying. So my degree of uh, freedom that will be equals to M minus 1 minus K. So if you recall the m is your number of intervals which are 5 minus 1 minus for the normal distribution the parameters there are two parameters and this turns out to be 2 in terms of the normal distribution. Now in terms of the log normal distribution we have the same that my f is equals to m minus 1 minus k that is equals to 5 minus 1 again in the log normal distribution i have two distribution parameters that again turns out to be 2 this time it is for the log normal Folks, I need to go to next slide, please. Now I can find out my C value which will be 1 minus my alpha at the value of f for normal distribution 
my C will be 1 minus 0 0.05 and the F is 2. We just calculated F for normal distribution. So that turns out to be C of uh, 0 0.95 and 2. Now I go to my table and find out this value which is uh, 5.991. This value is coming from the table which I just showed you. For log normal, again the C with the same significance level it should be at 0.95 and F value is same as well. So this one will also turn out to be 5.91. This is again from the table. If you have the different significance uh, level and F you need to look on that value from the table. Folks, I will go on the next slide, please. Now, for chi scale test. This was the condition that we were discussing for n of i minus e of i over ei, the scale of this term and the summation. i is from 1 to m. This should be less than the value of your c1 minus alpha and f. Now for not this quantity if you allow me to go back here this quantity is 1.311 for normal distribution. So this quantity is 1.311 and it is less than the C value which was 5.991 for normal distribution. So I can say that uh, my normal distribution is acceptable. Now let's check for the log normal. For log normal, you allow me to go back, please. This quantity was turns out to be 1.285. So this is uh, 1.285. And for log normal distribution, this factor was 5.991. So again, it is acceptable. So we can say that both distributions are acceptable for the given data. However, log normal is slightly better than normal distribution. So we can say that both are acceptable. However, log normal
is slightly better. than normal distribution. That's because the value of your 1.285 is smaller than the value of 1.11. So that's why we can say that log normal is slightly better than normal distribution. So I can say that the data which is given to me in the question, the log normal distribution is more appropriate for that data. Folks, I will stop it here and I will take your questions if you have any. Folks, uh, do you have any questions for me? Okay, good question. So how this is asking, why did you divide data into five intervals? Can we divide it into other numbers? Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. Now, what will be the difference actually? Let me take you back here. And if you divide it in six intervals or 10 intervals, how do you confirm your answer? This number, this number should be your equals to your actual number of observations. For example, take, uh, it has a seven intervals and your friend take it as a four intervals. Both of them should add up these values to equals to the number of your observations or number of your data. Yes, one more question. Yes, please. So how this is asking k is always two for all kinds of distributions no it depends as the normal distribution let me go on the as i mentioned in the normal distribution you have the parameters of mu and sigma so there are two so the k value here is two However, if we are taking exponential distribution, where you know that it's on parameter, which is lambda, so in this case, your k value will be 1. So it depends on. So the value of the k depends on your distribution. Yukuba is asking Does choosing a range of x uh, depends on. No, it depends upon how many intervals you want to provide it. So in this particular solution, we are providing it as the five uh, intervals. So you need to adjust your data with five intervals. Again, you can increase your intervals. Maybe you can make it six or seven. 
but just make sure when you add up these numbers over here these should be equal to your number of observations it is not that you choose to have uh, five intervals but you have uh, more values than five okay long is asking is there any difference in the result if you choose the number of intervals other than five no there will be no difference in the answer the results remain the same the only difference will turns out to be your this number this number will change however the final result will be the same jiku saying better sorry what do you mean by that uh jiku i'm sorry i didn't get your uh, question okay folks whatever i'm doing for this one this one is from a book with the title of uh, probability reliable and statistical methods in engineering design this is written by achintya alder and uh, and Karen Mahadevan anything which I did today this is from uh, a topic which is in chapter number 5 there is only one copy in the library which means not every one of you can access it so what i will do i will uh, scan this uh, these the pages of uh, the relevant pages and i will upload uh, that copy on the d12 so that you don't have to i mean already it's only one copy so you can only consult it you cannot issue that copy from there you are welcome asking is the result accuracy improved well we don't need to have the accurate numbers but the final result is more important by that i mean to say if you allow me to go back by that i mean to say these numbers we are not concerned how accurate they are but yes we are concerned with the final results of course Folks, this uh, topic is also available in uh, George uh, book, which is, however, it is written in a very complex way. This book uh, represents this in a very simplest way. 
So I will strongly recommend you to work on this. I will make this uh, relevant uh, topic available on D12 for you. Folks, do you have any more questions for me for today? Sorry, I think I take uh, five or seven minutes more. seems like you don't have any more questions so i will let you go i will make this uh, book the relevant topic available on d12 and you can go through this example again and ask me if you have any questions thank you very much uh, everyone and have a good weekend see you on tuesday Uh, this is asking please upload the table for that example as well yes i will upload the table i will also upload the appendix which i just showed you for sure okay thank you very much everyone and have a good weekend